The Ukrainian military has started deploying drones retrofitted with thermite payloads, effectively transforming its lethal fleet of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, into potent flamethrower weapons. Footage shared by Ukraine's 108th Separate Territorial Defense Brigade shows these drones releasing streams of molten thermite over enemy positions resulting in large plumes of smoke billowing from the impact zones. The widely circulated video highlights the destructive capability of these modified drones as the thermite ignites upon contact, creating an inferno capable of obliterating Russian positions. Thermite is still considered less lethal than white phosphorus or napalm, although the specific drone model is unclear. War bloggers suggest that footage from the drone's point of view points to it being one of the larger FPVs. When ignited, thermite, a mixture of metal powder and metal oxide, can reach temperatures high enough to melt through steel. Today, there are a lot of updates from the Kursk direction. Here, the Ukrainians launched a powerful attack at the northern flank of Koronivo, effectively encircling a large concentration of Russian fighters. Simultaneously, they are advancing on the southern flank, setting the stage for an even larger encirclement of Russians in Koronivo. As previously reported, Ukrainian forces entered Koronivo and consolidated their positions on the eastern outskirts after the Russians redeployed their main force away from the town. However, Russian troops in the area quickly organized a defense along the Krepna River, which runs through Koronivo. To avoid brutal urban combat, the Ukrainian command shifted its main focus to the northern and southern flanks, assembling powerful assault formations to advance from these directions. The most significant Ukrainian tactical success occurred on the northern flank of the town. It was initially believed that Russian forces in this area maintained a solid defensive line along the Krepna River, except for the village of Zuravli. However, Ukrainian forces launched powerful assaults to bypass this line, aiming to break through the Russian defenses and reach the railway embankment to the north, setting the stage for prolonged clashes. The Russian forces defending the line at Kremlinoy and Durovka suffered from poor coordination due to ineffective communication and the inability to adapt to Ukrainian advances. With a limited number of troops in the region, the Russian command struggled to deploy and cover all gaps in their defenses against the Ukrainian push. Additionally, the quality of the Russian forces was compromised while experienced marines were reserved for ambushing Ukrainian raids from the rear, the primary defensive positions were manned by conscripts. This situation has allowed the Ukrainian offensive groups from the 82nd Air Assault Brigade to effectively use their striker mechanized units to breach the scattered Russian defense lines. As a result, the Ukrainian forces have reached the railway embankment northeast of Koronivo successfully bypassing the Russian defenses. The fall of the Durovka Kremyonoi pocket would allow Ukrainian forces to advance on the northern part of Koronivo. Capturing this northern section would sever the Koronivo Rilska Highway completing the encirclement of the Russian garrison in the town and paving the way for its eventual takeover. Simultaneously, Ukrainian forces have continued their advance south of Koronivo. Elements of the Ukrainian 36th Marine Brigade are working to expand the southern flank to secure it for a main assault on Koronivo from the south. During these operations, the Ukrainian Marines have established control over the village of Vishnevka and captured half of Komarovka. 
The goal of the Ukrainian command in this area is to advance and secure positions along the Snagist River to simplify flank defenses. By achieving this, they would reduce the number of troops needed to guard the flanks, allowing a greater concentration of forces to intensify attacks south of Koronivo and bolster the main offensive. Russian forces have continued to make advances toward the city of Pokrovsk, according to the U.S. think tank Institute for the Study of War, whose latest map shows the state of play on the front line in Ukraine's Donetsk region. Pro-Moscow military bloggers have said that Vladimir Putin's troops are attempting to envelop or encircle Ukrainian forces in Vuledar. It lies around 40 miles south of Pokrovsk, a logistics hub whose capture would deliver a huge boost to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Newsweek has contacted the Ukrainian and Russia Defense Ministries for comment. The Ukrainian open-source intelligence channel Deep State said the town of Prekostivka was now occupied by Russia, while the Telegram channel Katyonik posted that this advance looks like a prelude to enveloping Vuledar in pincers. The ISW's map on Tuesday of terrain east of Pokrovsk marks some of these frontline developments, including Russian advances on Tuesday toward Halitsinivka and Nevelsky. In the coming months, Kyiv hopes that a bill, signed into law in April to overhaul Ukraine's draft rules to generate fresh manpower, will bear fruit. The Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies has said that Russian troops in the Pokrovsk direction have a 4 to 1 advantage over Ukraine in both personnel and the supply of drones and ammunition. It said Russia could reach the outskirts of Pokrovsk by mid-September at the current rate, albeit at a heavy cost in troops and equipment. Russian forces have accelerated their gains in Donetsk since the start of Ukraine's incursion into Russia's Kursk region, raising questions in Ukrainian society about the objectives of Kyiv's push when hammered by Russian advances in Donetsk.